Okay, uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so thank you all for coming to our uh, final debate, uh, which is uh, uh, titled as Regulatory Students for Non-Local Space Time Master Equation. Uh, I'd also like to thank my uh, PhD advisor, Professor Pablo Raul Stinga, and all the committee members. Uh, my, the structure of my dissertation is in chapter one, uh, we, we talked about the motivation uh, behind studying the uh, problem, the fractional power of uh, parabolic operator. In chapter two, we uh, define precisely uh, uh, the non-local equation and uh, also uh, prove that uh, this is a particular example of master equation. Uh, now, because this is a non-local equation, we also prove a local characterization of that uh, of that non-local problem, which we call as extension method. In chapter three, we prove uh, interior and boundary Harnack inequalities. And in chapter four, we characterize the parabolic holder space uh, in the spirit of Campanato. And in chapter five, we prove boundary and uh, interior and boundary powder uh, This is the, uh, this is, uh, these are the research product. Uh, so in, the first paper, uh, which is titled as Hanak Inequalities and Holder Estimate for Master Equation. And this uh, work is, uh, is in collaboration with Marta de la Contreras and Professor Pablo Raulstinga. And this is currently under a review. Uh, the second paper, uh, the title of which is a regularity estimate for non-local space-time master equation in bounded domain. Uh, this work is uh, done with collaboration with Professor Pablo Raulstinga, and uh, it, it has been accepted in Journal of Evolution Equation a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so we start our discussion uh, uh, with uh, the motivation and uh, the introduction part. Uh, so we study regularity of solution of non-local equation driven by fractional power of parabolic operator of the form del t plus l to the power s. Uh, and here, S is in between zero and one. Uh, so the operator L is divergence from elliptic operator with bounded measurable co coefficient with either homogeneous Dirichlet or Neumann boundary condition. Uh, this operator uh, appears in uh, many different physical uh, applications. Uh, as an example, uh, uh, in the application of semi-permeable membranes in the phenomenon of osmosis and in deficient model of biological innovation. Uh, and uh, this particular operator is an example of master equation, which is described uh, by this operator, which is M, U, uh, T, X, and then this integration with a kernel K. Uh, uh, so we can see from uh, this integral expression that to evaluate in U at any point P and X, we need to know the value of U uh, in Rn and for all past time. And that is why this is a non-local equation. And uh, this, this equation uh, is used to model continuous time random work, long range interaction, and system with memory. Mm. Uh, so now we will uh, discuss this particular example of semi permeable membrane problem. And uh, here in this diagram, uh, y equals to zero is the membrane. And let capital U is the internal pressure of the fluid. Uh, so the diff and and the phi ex is the external pressure at the membrane. Uh, so the fluid uh, follows this diffusion process, diffusion equation uh, in the region where y is greater than zero. And from this three equation, uh, it is evident that if the internal pressure is greater than the external pressure phi, then there is no flow. Whereas if it is less than uh, the external pressure then there is a flow in this direction. So there is this unidirectional flow, flow uh, uh, which uh, the semi, and that's why this is called semi permeable membrane uh, because it permits only the unidirectional flow. Now, in this case, we want to understand the quantity, uh, the partial derivative of Y, which is the flow. Uh, and to do that, we apply Fourier transform in time and in the x variable, such that e goes to rho and x goes to zero. Then the diffusion equation becomes a second order ODE in the variable y. 
Now, if we solve this new hat, we get this exponential with this, uh, with this factor square root of i rho plus zeta square, and then times u hat rho zeta at y plus to zero. Now we calculate uh, the partial derivative of y, and we see that this factor comes in front of u hat. Now, because i rho plus zeta square is the Fourier multiplier corresponding to the operator del t minus Laplacian, hence we can define uh, based on that that the flow after taking the Fourier inverse in time that the flow is square root of this operator del t minus lap and that acts on u t x zero. So in this example, we see how uh, the fractional power of the heat operator uh, appears. And here the uh, power is s, s equal to half. Uh, so on the membrane, uh, if, we, if we consider the problem now on the membrane only, then uh, we need to consider only this three equation uh, from this diffusion process. And we see this three equation, these conditions are known as seniority complementary conditions. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, there is another problem where also the fractional power of parabolic operator appears, uh, that is the obstacle problem. And uh, if we consider that phi be an obstacle, and we want to find a function u which is above the obstacle for s in between zero and one, then uh, if it satisfies this equation, uh, then it is called the obstacle problem. This particular problem has been studied by Caffarelli uh, and uh, others uh, in their paper, this particular uh, obstacle problem. And we can see that for a s equals to half, these three equations are equivalent to this three equation. In fact, if we just replace this u t x zero by small u, and this uh, and the flow variable, which is a normal derivative by the fractional power uh, corresponding to s equals to half, then these three are exactly equivalent to this three. So this obstacle problem uh, is equivalent to a semi-permeable membrane problem. Uh, now we will consider the anisotropic case, uh, where, uh, and in this anisotropic case, uh, we replace the Laplacian in x by this divergence form operator. Uh, with a coefficient a x, which satisfies the ellipticity condition, and we also assume that the domain uh, for the x variable now is bounded. So this in this diagram we can see that x is bounded between a and b. All the other, and and also uh, we can uh, we can uh, have boundary condition uh, at del omega. Uh, so uh, all the rest of the three equations are same as in the isotropic case. So this is this is our anisotropic equivalent of the semi anisotropic semi permeable membrane problem, and in this problem, in this above setup, Fourier transform in the x variable is uh, difficult to implement because we have now bounded domain, and then we have variable coefficient a x. So rather we can use the spectrum of the operator L, uh, and we can we uh, for simplicity let assume that L has discrete spectrum. Uh, say psi k and lambda k as eigenfunction and eigenvalue, uh, then, and let capital U uh, k t y is the coefficient of u corresponding to the eigenfunction psi k, and u k hat rho y is the Fourier transform of u k t in time. So using those things, uh, and, and also uh, using the orthonormal basis of psi k, uh, uh, we can now write down that u hat rho x, y is this infinite sum, then u k hat rho y psi k x, but this u k hat rho y is the Fourier transform of u k t y. And the divergence operator acts in this following way, which is the summation, again, the infinite sum, and now the coefficient is lambda k times u k. So using all those uh, and applying Fourier transform now in only the time variable to the equation, uh, this diffusion equation, we get this. Now, using the orthogonality of the psi case, we can write that i rho plus lambda k plus del y y k hat rho y plus to zero. So again, this is now a second order differential equation in the variable y. So as before, if we solve, uh, we see that the partial derivative of u k hat rho zero uh, has square root of i rho plus lambda k uh, times u k hat rho zero. 
And if we take the Fourier transform, uh, Fourier inverse in the time variable now, uh, we get uh, del y, uh, negative del y in a t zero as the Fourier inverse of uh, this factor, which is square root of i rho plus lambda k e k hat rho zero. So in the isotropic case, we see, we saw that i rho plus zeta square is the Fourier uh, multiplier. Similarly, uh, parallel to that, we can say that i rho plus lambda k is the Fourier spectral multiplier for the operator del t plus l. So then the flow at the boundary uh, can be computed uh, in a similar way to be square root of this uh, parabolic operator. And that's how uh, the well, uh, that's how the fractional power of parabolic operator uh, appears in the uh, semi permeable membrane. Uh, so, our objectives uh, for, uh, for our, this talk is first, the first main objective is to understand the non local operator del t plus uh, l to the power s, where s is in between 0 and 1. And uh, uh, I mean, to know that we need to give a precise definition. And what do we mean by that? You can see that in this expression, we have i rho plus lambda k, which is a complex number. And then we are taking the square root of that complex number. And that is a multi-valued function. So we need to, uh, we need to have a, uh, we need to have a definition which, which should be well-defined. Uh, so we need to find a, the principal branch of that complex number. Secondly, find a meaningful pointwise formula. That means in that pointwise formula, we should not have uh, all the Fourier or spectral uh, uh, formulation. Rather, uh, we, we also discover that uh, using the uh, heat kernel for the operator L, uh, we have an integral formulation of the pointwise formula, which is very similar to the mask, which is uh, parallel to the master equation. Uh, so, and third, find a local PD characterization of a non-local problem. And this is very crucial uh, to prove different regular est regularity estimate uh, for the solution of the non-local equation. Uh, and uh, finally, study the fundamental solution. Uh, our next main objective is to prove different regularity estimate for the solution. And uh, uh, that means we prove interior and boundary Harnack inequalities. And then we prove interior and boundary Schauder estimate when the data F is holder continuous. And uh, to find how the data affects the boundary regularity. And finally, whether the boundary regularity is consistent with the interior regularity for different boundary conditions. So these are our objectives uh, for uh, this talk. And uh, so we will start with the precise definition of del t plus l to the power s, where s is in between zero and one. So we define hs, h to the power s, uh, which is equals to del t plus l to the power s, where l is a divergence form operator, and the ax are uniformly elliptic. And the domain may be unbounded with appropriate boundary conditions. Under this assumption, L has either discrete or continuous spectrum. For simplicity, let us assume that L has discrete spectrum and eigen uh, and eigenvalues and eigenfunctions are, are lambda k and psi k. Uh, so, it, uh, so here I want to say that all the all the uh, method we, uh, which are true for discrete can also be proved to be true for the continuous spectrum. I mean, we prove that uh, these are true also for the continuous. Spectrum. Uh, now, because L is a divergence form operator, we define H to the S in a weak sense. So uh, before we go through that, let me uh, say a little bit about the weak solution. Uh, so we say that WX is a weak solution to LW equals to F if for all G, which is compact, uh, which is C infinity with compact support in omega, uh, we have LW acting on G as this integration and that should be equals to fg. Uh, so based on that, uh, we say that psi k is a eigenfunction of L with eigenvalue lambda k in weak sense if for all g, again, c infinity with compact support, uh, this uh, quantity is lambda k gk. But gk is the uh, coefficient of g uh, corresponding to psi k. 
and that implies that uh, this quantity now uh, a is equals to uh, the summation uh, uh, this finite uh, infinite sum and then lambda k w k g but w k is now the coefficient of w corresponding to phi. So this is the weak. Uh, uh, this is the definition of weak solution. Uh, now, based on that, we uh, uh, we define HS using psi k an eigenfunction of L and Fourier transform in time. So let u uh, be an L2 function. U, u be a u be a L2 function. Uh, then we denote u k t to be the coefficient of small u uh, corresponding to psi k and u k hat rho is the Fourier transform of u k t in the time value. And finally, we define HS u in a weak sense to be uh, this integration in R, then this infinite sum, and now I rho plus lambda k to the power s u k hat rho, and then the conjugate of v k hat rho d rho for all u v in domain of H. But the domain of H s is defined as collection of all those L2 function such that this quantity is finite. Now we can see that uh, this definition is in weak sense, uh, indeed is in weak sense because it is parallel to this formulation, which is the definition of weak solution or L. Uh, so uh, uh, now, uh, uh, now ne next we want to evaluate the principal branch of I rho plus lambda k to the power s. Uh, because as we said before, that I rho plus lambda k is a complex number, and uh, uh, and uh, um, and you know, if s is a, if s is in between zero and one, this is a multi-valued function. As an example, we can uh, take this uh, uh, this quantity c plus four i, and let's say s equals to half. We can see that it has two different values: two plus i and negative two minus i. So which one to choose? Uh, so that is one. Two, challenge. Uh, the, the next challenge is uh, to write down HS in a form which does not have all the Fourier or spectral notation. Uh, to have a meaningful, meaningful pointwise formula. Uh, and so both of these challenges can be overcome by using the gamma function. Uh, so for, let's say, uh, for, uh, for lambda is real positive number and S in between zero and one, we can write lambda to the power s as this integral formula where we have gamma is the gamma function. This gamma of negative s is the gamma function. We want to write, uh, we want to prove that this is also true for uh, this complex number i rho plus lambda. So we, we want to write the same integral formulation uh, now for a complex number, which is i rho plus lambda k. And here the lambda k is always positive. Uh, in our case. Uh, so how can we prove that? Uh, we, we prove that uh, by the basic complex analysis and uh, uh, this, here, this is the ray i rho plus lambda k and the function f of z, which is e to the negative z minus one over z to the power one plus s. Now this function is analytic in the uh, right hand side uh, uh, of this y equals to zero. Uh, then if we take, uh, if we do the uh, Cauchy integration in this contour and make this radius to infinity and this radius to zero, we can get our desired result, which is, uh, which is this. Uh, so using that now, we replace uh, I rho plus lambda k to the power s in the expression of HSQ uh, at on v. And if we do that, then, we replace this i rho plus lambda k to the s here, we get this. Now, now we will we will introduce semi-group operators corresponding to del t and l. And the notation of the semi-group operators are e to the power negative tau del t and e to the power negative tau l, uh, which are semi-group operator corresponding to del t and l uh, respectively. And how they act. Uh, the action of this semi-group operator is time shift, whereas the action of this semi-group operator is this infinite sum with the coefficient now e to the power negative tau lambda k into t. 
and both of the semi group operator uh, commutes with each other. And now, why do we introduce this semi group operator? Because in the next slide, we'll see that this expression now can be written as inner product between two quantities, and where we can see that the semi group operator. So now we can just replace uh, this complicated looking expression by the semi group formulation. Uh, and then we have this theorem that says that del t plus l to the power s uh, can be written formally as uh, this integral expression, which is exactly similar to the integral expression for lambda to the power s. You can see, go back again to uh, note that. So you can see that this is the integral formulation for lambda to the power s. So we can write down at least formally uh, that del t plus l to the power s is also can be written in this way. In the sense that for any V in domain of HS, uh, del T plus L to the power S U acting on V is this integration, where these are the inner product in M. Uh, in the next couple of slides, we'll see that the semi-group formulation, uh, the method of semi-group will help us to obtain the pointwise formula which we're uh, trying to find, uh, the meaningful pointwise formula. And to do that, we need uh, the heat kernel of the operator L. Uh, but before that, I just introduce what is what do you mean by the heat kernel. So if you consider the following set of equation, which is a parabolic equation, and L is our operator with an initial value H not X, which is the initial data, uh, then the solution uh, H tau X can be written in, in this way where W tau is the kernel and H0 uh, H0 is the initial data. And this W tau kernel, uh, the kernel W tau is called the heat kernel of L. And the, and the second equality says that the heat kernel is, uh, is related to the uh, semi-group corresponding to L in this way. That this is, uh, this integration is same as the, this semi-group acting on the initial data. So that's how they are related. So now, uh, and um, for, uh, so in our setting, um, in our setting, uh, because the uh, uh, because the L, uh, the operator L uh, satisfies the uniform electricity condition, uh, uh, that implies that the heat kernel satisfies the integer Gaussian estimate. So these are the integer Gaussian estimate, uh, which says that W tau is uh, is greater than uh, equals to C1 over tau to the power n over two times this exponential function, and it is uh, bounded by also C2 over tau to the power n over two uh, times this exponential function. So these are the interior Gaussian estimate for uh, the heat kernel W. Uh, so then uh, replacing that semi-group now with heat kernel and using Fubini's theorem a couple of times, we get that our operator del T plus L to the power S you acting on B can be written as the combination of three different uh, integrations. And the first one, we can see that this resembles the master equation. Uh, so, and um, now because this is a weak formulation, that's why we have this extra term V. So if we go back to the master equation uh, formulation, uh, so this is the master equation you can see, uh, we have this integration, then a kernel, and an expression involving E. In our case, uh, in our case, we can see that we have a kernel, then we have uh, an expression involving U, and also another expression involving V. And it, this in, uh, expression appears because of the weak formula. And uh, we also want to talk a little bit about this uh, uh, integration, integral uh, expression. Uh, we can see that this resembles the Marto's fractional time derivative. In fact, if uh, L is a Neumann operator, uh, uh, this uh, uh, this quantity would be one, and and we are left with uh, this, which is the which is exactly uh, the fractional Marto's time derivative. And uh, uh, so from this uh, from this uh, ex expression uh, again uh, we see that to 
evaluate this pointwise formula, we need to know u uh, in omega, everywhere in omega, and for all parts time. So this is non-local in space and time. Secondly, using the estimate for W tau, uh, the Gaussian estimate uh, for W tau, we can prove that our uh, our kernel also satisfy these two estimates. And here, this n plus two is the parabolic dimension, and two s is the order. So from this estimate, we can say that this operator is of order 2s in space, whereas in time we can see that it is of order s because there is a half, how to be the one half. Uh, so, so these are the information we can get uh, from uh, from uh, the estimate of uh, estimate of the kernel k. Uh, so now we will uh, now we will move to the extension theorem, which is the local PV characterization of our non-local problem. And this is uh, very important to prove uh, uh, all the regularity results, uh, such as Hanak inequalities and Schroeder. Uh, so, in the extension theorem, uh, we prove that if small u is the solution to the non-local problem, which is this part, uh, then there is a weak, un, unique weak solution, uh, capital U, to this parabolic problem. This is a local degenerate parabolic equation such that if we restrict u, capital U at y equals to zero, we get back the small u. And if we take the normal derivative, uh, and then if we take y equals to zero, we get back the uh, non-local operator. So that is the idea, uh, that is the statement of extension theorem. And we prove, uh, we get this extension theorem in the same speed as Kaffel and Silver strip proved the extension for the fractional level. Uh, and we also have explicit formulas for u using the semi-group. Uh, and we also evaluate different estimate for fundamental solution using the extension method. Uh, in fact, uh, all those estimate for fundamental solution also shows that our operator is of order s in time and 2s in time. So this is the diagram for extension. And we can see that this is our non-local equation. And this is the local degenerate equation. Uh, we, we extend one dimension, uh, we, we add one more dimension, and we get this para local degenerate parabolic equation. Now, if we take the normal derivative, and at y equals to zero, we get back the uh, non-local operator. Whereas uh, for uh, for this not um, capital U, if we uh, do y equals to zero, we get back the solution uh, small solution of non-local. So that is the idea of extension. Uh, now uh, we will we will state uh, our first regularity result, which is the integer Harnack inequality. Uh, uh, so we know that integer Harnack inequality for local parabolic and elliptic equation is a very important uh, result because uh, by the lo uh, when we get the uh, when we prove the local uh, uh, Harnack inequality that gives us uh, the uh, bound on the oscillation of uh, the solution, which helps us to prove the holder estimate. That is a very important result. In, that is a very important result in the local PDV theory. Uh, so uh, for our case also, this is uh, this gives us the first regularity. So the setting is uh, we have this rectangle R, and here the time variable goes from zero to one. And the space variable is the ball b to one, and we have sub rectangle r minus, where the time variable one it goes from one foot to half, and the space variable is br, and another sub rectangle r plus, where the time variable goes from three foot to one, and the space variable is again br. So, and this b to r uh, is compactly contained inside domain. So then there exists a constant C, which depends on the electricity in S and R, such that if U is a solution to the non-local, homogeneous non-local equation in the rectangle R, and if U is non-negative everywhere in omega and for all past time, less than one, then supremum of U in the sub-rectangle R minus can be controlled 
by the infimum of E in the sub rectangle R plus. Excuse me. Uh, moreover, we also prove that U is U in R is locally bounded and locally parabolically alpha helder continuous for some exponent in between uh, 0 and 1. So that is the statement of interior Harnack inequality. Uh, so we will give uh, the outline of the proof of the interior Harnack inequality when A is equals to half for simplicity. Uh, so for A is equals to half case, we have this uh, non-local equation uh, and you can see that if the fractional power is half now and uh, U and uh, and u is non-negative in negative one, negative infinity to one times omega. Then the extension u satisfy a parabolic equation uh, in the rectangle R and for y positive. As that, if you restrict u at y equal to zero, you get back the small u. And if you take the normal derivative of capital U and restrict at y equals to zero, you get back the operator. Now since U is non-negative in, in everywhere uh, in this uh, region. Using the semi-group, we can prove that the capital U is non-negative for Tx in that rectangle and Y positive. Next, we will evaluate the even ref reflection of U in the Y variable. Uh, and because the normal derivative of U is zero, we can prove that this u bar is a non-negative weak solution to this equation where tx in r but now y in between negative one to one. So why do we need this even reflection? Because uh, because uh, the region where small u lies that is actually at the boundary when y equals to zero. So we would and the rectangle r now we want to make that rectangle R to be interior of some bigger space. And we can do that and we can see that that R now is indeed in, uh, in an interior of the region where Tx is in R and Y is in negative one. And then we want to use the interior Harnack inequality for U bar. So now it, because it is well known that U bar is satisfied parabolic Harnack inequality due to measure uh, then we can get the Harnack inequality for small u by restricting at y equals to zero. So this is the diagram that will help us to understand more. You can see that if R minus and R plus are the sub rectangle uh, uh, in the domain P, Px. And then uh, in this domain, uh, when we take y greater than zero, we get uh, our capital U, which is the extension, which is the solution to the extension equation. And then if we reflect, we get the uh, region uh, where U bar is the solution to a parabolic equation. Now U bar satisfy Harnack inequality. That's why supremum of U bar in the cookie C minus uh, is controlled by infimum of U bar in the cookie C plus. Now if you restrict that at y equals to zero, we get Harnack inequality for small. So that is the idea of Harnack inequality, in, of proving the Harnack inequality. And now, if for any other S in between 0 and 1, we use the interior Harnack inequality due to Ishiji uh, to prove uh, the Harnack inequality uh, for non local. We also prove boundary Harnack inequality using the extension. So now we will um, move to the, our second regularity result, which is the Schauder estimate. Uh, in the Schauder estimate, we study regularity of solution uh, to the non-local equation under different regularity condition on the coefficient a and, uh, and also on the data. Uh, then we see that we prove that the solution u has better regularity than uh, the data by a factor depending on n. So uh, if we if we uh, if we just consider the uh, simplest example, which is the second order Laplacian, uh, we know that if the data f is in C alpha, uh, then our solution u is in C alpha plus two. Here two is the order of the equation because this is the second order. Uh, uh, so um, so we 
Similarly, for uh, this equation also, we expect that you have better regularity by factor depending on A, because now we know we have seen that the order of the equation is S in time to S in time. Uh, but, uh, before, but before we prove the shorter estimate for our case, we need a proper definition of parabolic holder space for different holder exponents. Um, uh, so when we know that if alpha is in between zero and one, u in c alpha over two in time and alpha in x implies that u is c alpha over two in time and u is c alpha in x. Similarly, uh, for the case when one plus alpha over two in time and two plus alpha, this is also well understood because uh, then we know that we can take one derivative in time and two derivative in x and they are this one derivative in time is in c alpha over two time and the two derivative in x is now c alpha in x. But what about the intermediate holder space? It is not immediate how to define this intermediate holder space, which is one plus alpha whole divided by two in time and one plus, one plus alpha in x. So in his book, Lectures on Elliptic and Parabolic Equation in Holder Space, Philip used interpolation result to suggest the following. Uh, for del time between zero and one, uh, he said in remark 8.8.7 that above we have considered para the parabolic holder spaces of function having either zero or two derivatives with respect to it, which is which are exactly these two situations. The question arises about defining naturally a space C one plus delta over two in time and one plus delta in x a function having only one derivative. The above result, uh, these are the result in his book. Uh, uh, so the above results show that with respect to parabolic matrix, one derivative in time is worth two derivative in it. This suggests that C1 plus delta over two comma one plus delta should be defined as the space of all function with finite norm, u not, this is the L infinity norm, then the golden norm for one derivative in x and this semi norm. So this is the suggestion he uh, made in a remark uh, uh, as, as a, a candidate for um, this intermediate holder space. And he also stressed that, by the way, the above exercise sh shows that under this definition, we have the following natural property. Operators di are bounded operators from C1 plus delta over 2, comma 2 plus delta into C1 plus full divided by 2, comma 1 plus delta. So, uh, so these are this is the suggestion he made about this particular holder, intermediate holder space. Now, our proof for Schauder estimate depends on the compactness principle. Uh, uh, so it, it follows method uh, 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 introduced by Caffarelli uh, and others. And uh, in those, uh, for those cases, we need to use uh, a very particular type of, uh, uh, type of characterization for the holder space. This is called Campanato type characterization. In our paper, we actually prove that the holder space suggested by Trilo is uh, indeed uh, uh, coincide with the Campanato type characterization. So we prove this result that uh, let the uh, domain omega be Lipschitz and let alpha in between zero and one, and this is the parabolic cylinder, then U is in the intermediate holder space. That means uh, the definition suggested by Trilo if and only if there is a constant c such that uh, such that the mean distance from a polynomial and we are taking the mean over this parabolic cylinder such that the mean distance and then we are taking the infimum such that this quantity is less than equals to c times r to the power two times one plus r. Uh, and here this p1 is the collection of all linear polynomials in the space. So we prove that there is indeed a Campanato type characterization for that holder. 
and uh, and this Campana type of characterization is very useful. This is our definition uh, for all our uh, subsequent discussions. This is the definition of the intermediate holder set for all our subsequent uh, So, uh, so here is our, our here is, here are the results for integer shoulder estimate. Uh, so let alpha in between zero and one, and suppose that f is in c alpha over two in time and alpha in x. Let u be the weak solution to the non-local equation such that. Uh, Either the boundary condition is Dirichlet or a Neumann. It uh, doesn't actually depend on the boundary because it's an interior shorter estimate. Then, if alpha plus two s is in between zero and one, and the coefficients are continuous, then and u is in alpha plus two s over two in time and alpha plus two s in time. Whereas, if alpha plus two s is in between one and two then we need our coefficient to be holder regular with the coefficient alpha plus 2s minus 1. And then we prove u is in the, uh, u is in the uh, intermediate holder. We also proved uh, holder, uh, shorter estimate when the right hand side is LP. Uh, in this regard, I want to mention that similar type of estimate for the fractional elliptic operator uh, which is uh, time independent was shown by uh, Kafferelli and Stinger in 2016. Now I will uh, give a brief outline of the proof, the idea of the proof. Uh, so we will consider the case when alpha plus 2s is in between 1 and 2. Uh, the extension theorem again is the most um, crucial tool to prove the, uh, uh, to prove the shadow estimate. Uh, so again, let capital U solve this degenerate parabolic equation so that if we restrict capital U at y equals to zero, we get back the small u. And if we take the normal derivative and restrict at y equals to zero, we get back the small Now, we need to compare this u t x zero with a polynomial t x. And we see why, because from the Campanato uh, characterization, we see that we need to compare this small u with a linear polynomial. And now the small, the small u is at, is capital U at y equals to zero. So that's why we need to compare capital U with zero with a small polynomial u. How can we get the polynomial? We use the compactness method to do that. Uh, some of the key ingredients for compactness method are, the first is the parabolic Kachopoli inequality or the energy estimate. The second is Aubin's, Aubin Lyons lemma which provides compactness criterion for Banach space value. So using these two ingredients, we can prove that there's a solution W to the degenerate heat equation. So this is the degenerate heat equation and which is close to our solution in L2 now. And finally, from that W, we construct the polynomial P using the Taylor series expansion. In fact, we just, take the first two terms of the Taylor series expansion and we construct our polynomial P. And finally, we transfer, we are transferring the regularity of W to P. So that is the idea behind the proof of Next, we will, uh, we will state our result for boundary uh, regularity and we will, uh, we will state the result when the boundary uh, condition is Dirichlet and f is non-zero because this is the interesting case. So let alpha is in between zero and one, and f the data is again uh, holder regular, parabolic holder regular, and let u be the solution uh, to the non-local equation such that u is zero on the boundary. Then there are three cases. The first one is s is less than half, and alpha plus two s is in between zero and one. In that case, we need our coefficient to be holder continuous with c zero alpha, and the boundary to be c one alpha. Then for every t in i, our solution has two components. The first one is this distance function from the boundary to the power 2s plus b, where b is holder regular. If s is half, then we need our coefficient to be zero, uh, we need our coefficient to be holder regular with alpha plus epsilon, and the boundary to be c1 alpha plus epsilon. 
uh, such that alpha plus epsilon should be less than one. Then for all t again, you has two components. The first one is this distance function times logarithm of distance function plus v, and here v is in the intermediate holder. And finally, for s greater than half and alpha plus two s is in between one and two, we need the coefficient to be c zero alpha plus two s minus one and the boundary to be c one alpha plus two s minus one. And then again, the solution you have this distance function part plus v, where the v is in this intermediate holder. Uh, if f is identically zero at the on the boundary, then there is no distance function and u would be equals to v. And also we need uh, regularity on the boundary, uh, on the coefficient to be exactly uh, as in the case of, as in the interior. So some comments that we observe that if is non-zero on the boundary, then the boundary regularity is not consistent with the interior. As an example, if we just consider the s less than half, then if you go back to the statement of uh, s uh, alpha plus 2s is in between 0 and 1, we need the coefficient to be continuous only. And then we get u to be in the holder state. Whereas in, the, in this case, in the boundary regularity, we see that we need our coefficient to be c0 alpha, and this solution u has a distance term. And so it is evident that the uh, global regularity is not consistent with the interior. And if f is identically zero, then the boundary estimates are consistent with the interior estimate, it estimates, and hence better than the earlier case. Uh, as we claim here that if f, f is identically zero on the boundary, then there is no distance term. And also uh, uh, we said that the coefficient should be same, uh, same regular as in the interior. And for the Neumann boundary condition, we show that the boundary regularity is again consistent with the interior. So in the next two slides, and, uh, we will, uh, we will uh, explain why this, um, uh, why this discrepancy. Uh, in fact, in the last slide, we will show how the boundary terms actually appear. So the fact that the regularity is less when f is non-zero is better explained by computing the particular one-dimensional point-wise solution to this equation. Here, the t is in R and x is, the, is in the right half real line. And the boundary condition is uh, Dirichlet. Now, if f, the data is holder continuous up to the boundary, and let's say the f t zero is zero, that means f is zero at the boundary, then we can take a, the odd reflection of f, which is f bar. And is, we can easily see that this f bar is also holder continuous in R2 now. So if now w bar is the odd reflection of w, then w bar satisfies this non-local equation in R2. At this point, we can, using our interior Schauder estimate in, in R2, and can claim that w bar is actually holder continuous in R2 now in R cross R and say, which further implies that W is T e alpha plus 2S over two in time and alpha plus 2S in X up to the boundary. Yeah, up to the boundary, that's why this is zero, we are including it here. So that is the reason that um, uh, regularity is consistent, the global regularity is consistent with the interior when the boundary, when the data is zero at the boundary. Now, if the data is non-zero, then we can evaluate the order reflection A bar, but you can see now that f bar is not continuous across x equals to zero uh, in the in the x variable. So at the base we can say that okay f bar is l infinity in the x variable. And in that case we can say that w bar in the x variable is t two s for s not equals to half. For s equals to half that would be in the Zygmunt space. So and hence our w is also C to S in the X. So that is the best we can say about the regularity. So now we will discuss this particular case when S is less than half and F is uniformly, identically one for all X and T. And then we compute that WTX is X to the power two S. This is the explicit expression 
for W. And we can see that this, we, can, we can interpret this X as a distance from the boundary also. That's why there is a boundary to the part 2S term uh, when S is less than half. In fact, if we go back to our problem, uh, let's say the one dimension uh, for simplicity, uh, then this is our problem in one dimension. Although we have a divergence from operator, but uh, let's think about this uh, Laplacian for simplicity again. Then we have the data G, the boundary condition for U is Dirichlet, but the data is non G. Uh, now, W is the solution uh, when F equals to uh, identically one. If we subtract that W from U, then we have another set of equation, which is uh, this non-local part again, uh, non-local operator acting on U minus W is now G minus F. U minus W also satisfy the Dirichlet boundary condition, but now the data is zero at the boundary. So for G, uh, U minus W now, we can use uh, this result. This is the result for U minus W. Now we can use. And then we can claim, okay, this V, which is equals to U minus W is in E alpha plus 2S over 2 in time and alpha plus 2S in X up to the boundary. And hence, our U, which is W plus V, is X to the part 2S. This is the boundary, uh, this is the distance term. And then the another term V, which is from the boundary. So that is the reason uh, behind the discrepancy when it is known. 